want you to hit me as hard as you can. Seriously, what the fuck happened to World War Z? How did one of the most chaotic and publicized production debacles of the past decade end up becoming one of the biggest box office successes of 2013? Was it merely the luminous star power of Brad Pitt? Could it be the middling critical word of mouth? Perhaps it was the sheer curiosity of seeing how a movie plagued by so many production woes would turn out. Regardless, the expensive spectacle-driven blockbuster sought to redefine the zombie subgenre while capitalizing on the current craze of the horror villains found in pop culture. Of course, the intent is one thing, the result is always another entirely. Indeed, World War Z was a massive logistical undertaking. The multilingual cross-continental production presented innumerable challenges for director Mark Forster and his cast and crew. As a result, the film suffered countless production mishaps along the way. Scheduling issues, recasting, script rewrites, budget miscalculations, payment fiascos, prop delivery failures, a replaced cinematographer, and a general lack of focused stewardship from Forster are among the chief problems that plagued the arduous production. Worse yet, upon displeasure from Warner Brothers Brass, the entire third act of the film had to be rewritten, with an additional $20 million allocated for the lengthy reshoots. Simply put, the production was an unmitigated disaster, and yet the film somehow went on to gross over half a billion dollars worldwide. The question certainly bears repeating, what the fuck happened to this movie? According to Brad Pitt, per IMDb, he initially became involved with the idea to star in World War Z because he wanted to make a movie his sons could enjoy. This whole thing started because I just wanted to do a film that my boys could see before they turned 18, one that they would like anyway, and they love a zombie. This led to Paramount and Pitt's Plan B production company entering a bidding war with Warner Brothers for the rights to Max Brooks's 2006 post-apocalyptic tomb, World War Z, an oral history of the zombie war, the follow-up to his much more satirical The Zombie Survival Guide. Interestingly enough, Leonardo DiCaprio's production company, Appian Way, was also in on the bidding, leading to a heavyweight showdown for the property between Pitt and DiCaprio. Hey, once upon a time in Hollywood, right? In 2007, Paramount and Plan B secured the rights to Brooks' novel for an estimated $1 million. That same year, an initial script adapted by Babylon 5 creator J. Michael Straczynski made The Blacklist, a Hollywood insider's compilation of the best unproduced screenplays each year. In March of 2008, a draft of the script leaked online, where it was favorably reviewed by Ain't It Cool News. In their review, they noted how the script was not just a good adaptation of a difficult book, but a genre-defining piece of work that could well see us all arguing about whether or not a zombie movie qualifies as best picture material. In terms of the general plot, the story follows former UN investigator Jerry Lane, who is recruited to help identify and contain a viral contagion ravaging the globe. Jerry brings his wife and two children to safety on an aircraft carrier in the Atlantic Ocean before traveling across the world to the most infected areas. When it soon becomes clear that the South Korea-born virus is turning people into flesh-starved zombies, Jerry and his fellow scientists must rethink their line of recourse. As the entire world becomes a frenzied feeding ground, all of this sets up for a gory bombardment of non-stop action. In 2009, Brad Pitt personally sought out Mark Forster to direct the film. The choice was inspired, if not obvious, as Forster demonstrated he could helm a wide array of material. He proved he could make controversial films like Monster's Ball, emotional gut punches in Finding Neverland, and perhaps most important, large-scale blockbusters in the Bond movie Quantum of Solace. Plan B, on the other hand, was not used to the kind of massive undertaking that World War Z proved to be, and neither was Forster. In late 2009, Forster admitted the script still needed work, despite Brooks's praise for Straczynski's final draft, with Joe Carnahan then brought in to do rewrites. The content of the film proved to be a major challenge right from the beginning. Forster envisioned the film more akin to the conspiracy thrillers of the 1970s, such as All the President's Men. Carnahan, on the other hand, likened his draft to the Bourne identity. As for Pitt, he was most drawn to the geopolitical subtext of Brooks's source novel, and wanted the movie to lean heavily in that direction. Alas, many of those aspects of the story were stripped in favor of visceral, effects-driven action. The plan was to allow Forster to focus on the story and character-driven subplots while handing the reins over to his effects team to oversee the technical logistics of the action scenes. But the director was so crippled by the mega-production that he couldn't even decide on how the zombies would look three weeks before filming. In 2011, Paramount reportedly sought a co-financier to handle the escalating budget of the film, even threatening to shut down production unless they found one. In April of 2011, the film went into pre-production with an estimated budget of $125 million a figure that would balloon substantially as the schedule advanced. Unfortunately, Pitt's own schedule interfered with his commitment to making the crime thriller Killing Them Softly, which prompted further production delays. 
Additional setbacks came in casting, when Brian Cranston and Ed Harris both agreed to star in the film in small roles, but were then forced to bow out due to scheduling overlaps. During pre-production, it was announced that three-time Oscar-winning cinematographer Robert Richardson, who had worked with Pitt on Inglorious Bastards, was hired to shoot the film. A schedule was presented, including several different filming locations around the globe. Sprawling outdoor shooting locations included several cities in England, as well as areas in Wales, Scotland, Malta, Hungary, and Philadelphia. As you can imagine, this proved to be a major logistical nightmare for Forster and crew. To give you an idea of the size, scale, and scope of the production, 2,000 extras were solicited for a scene shot in Glasgow, doubling as Philadelphia. However, 3,000 people showed up with desires to appear on screen. On June 20, 2011, World War Z began principal photography in Malta. During filming, a lack of organization led to a severe budget miscalculation. The wrap-up crew reportedly discovered a pile of payment receipts for the huge cast of extras, which was cavalierly thrown into a drawer and completely forgotten. The unaccounted for receipts contributed to the film running over budget. Unfortunately, that wasn't the only problem in Malta. During the scenes meant to recreate Jerusalem, the production was so disorganized and poorly coordinated that two film crews were working side by side, with hundreds of acting extras and ancillary costs piling up. It got so bad that shooting had to be delayed for many hours one day when the caterers didn't prepare enough food for all involved. Once again, after filming in Malta wrapped, a cleanup crew uncovered a pile of purchase orders relating to the cast and extras that were tucked away and ignored. The receipts totaled millions of dollars, further driving the film over budget. Once Paramount discovered how out of control the production costs had risen to in Malta, the studio ordered swift budget cuts. This further compromised Forster's vision, as he and his crew were forced to scrap a slew of costly FX-driven set pieces. Still, in August 2011, Paramount announced World War Z would be released in theaters on December 21st, 2012. One of the major set pieces that had to be cancelled was a massive and marvelous melee set in Russia, which was intended as the original ending of the film. The production flew to Budapest to film the scenes, but another unforeseen hang-up troubled Forster and crew once they arrived in Hungary. In October of 2011, a cache of prop weapons, flown in from London to be used by the production, was seized during a raid by the Hungarian Counterterrorism Center. A total of 85 prop pistols, rifles, and machine guns were confiscated on the spot, with Hungarian officials claiming that the firearms could theoretically be operated by removing the screws at the end of the barrel. Under Hungarian law, prop guns are only allowed to be used if the deactivation cannot be reversed. Despite the prop master ensuring Forster had been granted permission to use the firearms by Hungarian police, the hiccup reportedly made Brad Pitt irate. Still, the producers insisted the mishap did not delay filming. Three months after principal photography concluded, the charges over the firearms mix-up were officially dismissed. The production took one final body blow towards the end of filming. In late 2011, original cinematographer Robert Richardson became so fed up with the chaotic shoot and the creative differences he had with Forster that he abruptly left the production. Instead, he went on to film Django Unchained for longtime collaborator Quentin Tarantino. Richardson was replaced by Newton Thomas Siegel for the final few days of filming. Furthermore, when Paramount began converting the film in post-production without Richardson's supervision, he had his name removed from the project altogether. Richardson later remarked that the studio also interfered with his color correction and lookup tables without his blessings. As a consequence, Richardson hasn't been offered a single job from Paramount since. Upon seeing an early cut of the film in 2012, a meeting took place between Paramount executive Mark Evans, president of production Adam Goodman, and director Mark Forster. All three agreed that they did not like the original edit of the film, claiming that it was too jumbled, confusing, too abrupt, and far too reliant on Hollywood action spectacle, rather than a character-driven story. Brad Pitt was particularly disheartened that his primary interest in the novel, the complex geopolitical relations among countries, was dropped in the film version in favor of visual overkill. Crew members were even overheard lambasting the third act as Rambo vs. Zombies in the way it ditched the human element for big explosive action. In response, Paramount hired lost scribe Damon Lindelof to rewrite the third act in June of 2012. Lindelof was asked how best to improve the troublesome third act and restore the heartfelt character-driven material in place of the confounding spectacle. The writer suggested reshooting the entire third act, which he did not expect Paramount to sign off on. But the studio ultimately agreed, paying Lindelof and fellow writers Drew Goddard and Christopher McQuarrie to write 60 new pages of third act material while pumping an additional $20 million into the production for reshoots. The increase swelled the final budget of the film to a staggering $190 million. In terms of the third act reshoots, the biggest sequence that needed to be replaced was a climactic battle between humans and zombies set in Russia's Red Square. 
Shot in Budapest, the expensive set piece was ultimately nixed for its heightened political subtext and was replaced with even more blockbuster-friendly action. The original Russia sequence featured 12 minutes of Jerry Lane traversing a gauntlet of mouth-foaming zombies, likening him to more of a warrior hero than sympathetic everyman concerned for his family. The hampering trend of style over substance was noticed by the second unit director, Simon Crane, who told Vanity Fair that the film wasn't character-driven anymore. Although the original Russian finale was largely excised, parts of the sequence are shown in the epilogue of the final cut. Additional reshoots were done at the Pfizer Lab at Discovery Park in Sandwich, Kentucky. These scenes include Jerry's attempt to locate a cure for the zombie outbreak inside the hospital. To make matters worse, the relationship between Pitt and Forster had soured during the reshoots. The rift reportedly got so bad that the two stopped speaking to each other on set. Rumors even persisted that Forster's creative notes to Pitt had to be conveyed by one of the actor's handlers. Forster later publicly refuted such claims, although he did admit to escalating tension on set during the reshoots. The director also attributed the overblown gossip to the media, claiming they likely fanned the flames ignited by the problems plaguing the production right out of the gate. In addition to the reshoots, several other post-production issues arose. In March of 2012, Paramount pushed the release of the film back from December 21st out to June 21st of 2013. While the film was edited, Matthew Fox's role as the para-jumper was greatly reduced. His character arc was originally much larger, and he was even poised to become the potential human villain in a planned sequel. But in the final cut, Fox's character was limited to giving just five lines of dialogue in the whole film. Among Fox's excised footage was a subplot, in which Jerry's wife Karen, played by Morel Enos, began an affair with the para-jumper. But the biggest post-production omission was the drastically altered finale of the film. After the massive Red Square battle, the original ending had Jerry joining a Russian army against his will. Rather than crashing in Wales, the airplane lands in Moscow, where the infected are murdered and the remaining passengers are gathered together. An unknown amount of time passes until Jerry discovers the zombies' vulnerability to cold weather. The final sequence would have shown Jerry lead a coastal invasion of the zombies back home in Oregon. However, the producers felt the film was too brutal and opted to end it on a more optimistic note. Despite the extremely tumultuous production, World War Z was released internationally on June 21, 2013. Domestically, the film earned over $66 million at the box office on opening weekend, ranking second behind Pixar's Monsters University. The film also marked the biggest opening weekend for Brad Pitt up to that point. World War Z went on to amass roughly $202 million in the U.S., with an additional $337 million around the world, for a global total north of $540 million. Variety labeled the film a bona fide box office hit. All told, World War Z became the 13th highest grossing film of 2013. For a movie so monumentally cursed, the unlucky number 13 seemed perfectly fitting. While commercially successful, the film scored middling marks among most critical circles. According to Rotten Tomatoes, the film currently holds a 66% fresh rating and bears a 63 out of 100 Metascore and a 7 out of 10 IMDb rating. Much of the movie's praise comes from Pitt's performance and the non-stop action and thrilling suspense. On the other hand, most critical misgivings noted how heartless and formulaic the movie felt, how ineffective the climax of the film was, and how it did nothing to push the zombie genre forward. As for the reactions of those involved, director Mark Forster is on record favoring the extended, unrated cut of the film. This version was released on home video on September 17, 2013, and features roughly seven minutes of reinserted carnage. Yet for Forster, the improvement isn't so much about the additional gore, but how it increases the overall intensity of the film. Forster claimed he felt handcuffed in the attempt to tone down the theatrical cut to meet the demands of a PG-13 rating. World War Z author Max Brooks publicly expressed that he felt the film bore very little resemblance to his source novel, but did praise the casting of Pitt in the central role. Of course, when a movie banks over half a billion dollars worldwide, plans of a sequel are all but inevitable. In July of 2012, Forster and Paramount Brass both expressed their vision of World War Z as a film trilogy. The idea was to make a gritty, Born Identity-style franchise to compete with AMC's mega-popular zombie TV series, The Walking Dead. In December of 2013, Spanish director J.A. Bayona was announced as the director of World War Z 2. A year later, the sequel was given a release date of June 9, 2017. But in January of 2016, Bayona left the film to pursue another project. Fans were happy to learn David Fincher tossed his hat into the directorial ring, especially given his shorthand with Brad Pitt. By June 2017, Fincher was officially confirmed to direct the sequel, with filming set to commence in the fall of 2018. Unfortunately, after several months of pre-production in five different countries, the sequel was officially cancelled by Paramount in February of 2019. 
According to The Hollywood Reporter, the chief reason for the cancellation was due to China's ban on movies featuring ghosts and zombies. Speaking of China, it's worth noting how World War Z can be viewed in the context of 2020. There's an eerie parallel to the pandemic in the film and what many are currently experiencing with the COVID-19 outbreak around the globe. The viruses are not identical, obviously, but the film does conjure many of the terms and trends we're all enduring right now. Mention of lockdown, essential and non-essential personnel, contagion and mortality rates make the movie terrifyingly prescient. Moreover, in the Brooks source novel, the pandemic in World War Z comes from mainland China, the same area COVID-19 originated from. Interestingly, in March 2013, it was reported that Paramount changed a scene in the film from suggesting China as the culprit of the pandemic. South Korea is now the country of origin in the film. How's that for irony? World War Z overcame burdensome obstacles at nearly every stage of development. Problems arose early on in the acquisition phase and continued through casting, pre-production, filming, reshoots, post-production, and ultimately in the failed sequel attempt. And yet the film defied odds at nearly every turn to become one of the most successful zombie blockbusters of all time. That's what the f happened to World War Z.